In the name of God, the most beneficial and the most merciful, and never think of those who have been killed and who cause God as dead. Rather, they are alive with their Lord receiving provision. Assalamu alaikum wa wa Peace be upon you. It's my pleasure to see these beautiful faces here with us today to join us, our prayer, in a Friday day, in a Jumu'ah prayer. So, it's my pleasure again. Thank you so much for all of you. Before we continue our program for today we have a memory board there and I hope all of you to sign and leave for us some or few beautiful words then our kids especially in a Sunday school they will read what you uh, write for us in this day thank you so much Assalamu alaikum peace be upon you this attack is one of an unfortunate trend a symptom of a wider problem that's been playing out for years now. There was the slaying of nine people praying at the Emmanuel African Methodist Church in Charleston in 2015. The killing of 11 Jewish people at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh in 2018. Two foiled attacks against a Muslim community in upstate New York. One in 2015 the other earlier this year, the bombing of a mosque in Bloomington, Minnesota in 2017. The attack in New Zealand was grounded in hatred, racism, xenophobia, and Islamophobia, none of which have a place in our world, none of which have a place in our world. As a new generation, it is imperative that we unite in calling for an end to white supremacist and anti-immigrant views which so fear and embolden these acts of terror. It is our role to be sure that Muslims and others feel the support of their neighbors in the midst of this climate of hate. We are one people in the eyes of God. There is no place for these ideologies that seek only to divide. We strongly believe that an approach of education, acceptance, and active nonviolence is the answer. As a new generation, we continue to commit ourselves in Masjid Al-Tawad and our Imam Dr. Zahir Badrani to work with people of other faiths and none to build up a fairer, better, and peaceful world. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Peace be upon you. We'll start with, with Major King. Thank you for your comment. Well, thank you very much. On behalf of Sheriff Rick Bradshaw, thank you for this kind invitation to attend this very important event today. Let's be clear, there is no place for violence or hate in our society, especially in a house of worship. The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office is committed to that and providing a safe environment. I heard a little earlier something about uh, Sunday school. If you're so interested, I would love to have deputies attend a, a, a Sunday school session to interact with some of the youth because you're right, we need to keep open lines of communication and we need to look at this as a partnership. So we want our our youngest members of our society that feel comfortable with law enforcement in our community. So I would love to, to talk to you later about that. So thank you very much for the opportunity to talk today, and I want to thank you for putting together such an important event. Thank you, my dear brother Steve. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so it's wonderful to see everyone here, even though the um, circumstances are so sad. 
um, I'm going to give you a, a quote here from Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said, kindness is a mark of faith. Whoever is not kind has no faith. I want you to, I want you to hear something from the book we call the Tanakh, which is uh, what the Christians refer to as the Old Testament Bible. Now this is a, a, a quick uh, verse from Job, um, or we call him Eov in Hebrew. And uh, it says, now when Eov's friends, three friends heard that he, that all this evil had happened to him, they came, every one from his own place, Eliphaz, the Temanite, Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Nahamite. And they made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. So here we have three people who heard about the tragedy that befell this man, their friend. And they came each from their own place. They made an agreement, let's, let's go together and let's mourn and let's comfort with our friend. And you know something, I'm looking around here today and this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the, the faces of these three men in all of your faces, in my face, because this is the way it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna end with um, the quote that I said to all of them from my heart and that I also wrote on the wall back there. And I said, the people of the true and living God don't hesitate to show love and support to one another. as alaikum. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <coughs> Please, all the speakers, three minutes. For everyone's three minutes only. Thank you, Jazakallah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, my grandfather is a core indigenous. Uh, but like many native people, indigenous people were converted. I was raised in Pentecostal, I'm a Quaker. But I was raised by my grandfather's side of the family, one of 101 cousins. So our traditions are still strong. But I just want to tell, remind people that an injury, when someone is injured, killed, we're all injured and we're all killed. We feel it, because we have a heart and a soul, we feel it. But now we go to brother Suhil Bidrasa. My name is Sahib Dadras and uh, represent the Baha'i community here in Palm Beach County. Uh, what an honor to be here among you folks. And the story of uh, religious persecution is not old to really members of any religion. Uh, it's very dear to my heart as uh, the Baha'is in Iran in particular, as a lot of you guys would know, have been under heavy persecution in the last uh, over 100 years family members that I have, cousins that have been in prison only for their beliefs uh, as recently as just the last few years. Yet again, uh, Baha'is worldwide, just like anybody else with good heart, would know the best answer is love. And Fritz. Uh, my name is Fritz Offenkamp. I am a Lutheran pastor and I'm trying to change the Christian faith. Our faith was founded by a Jewish rabbi who forgave the soldiers who pounded the nails into his wrists. These soldiers were not believers, and yet he forgave them. And I'm trying to change our Christian faith that we no longer condemn to hell those who don't think like us. We have done this for 2,000 years, trying to scare people to think like us, and it has to stop. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Shukai. I come today to represent the Zen Buddhists from around the world. One of our sutras is called the Loving Kindness Sutra. May all beings be happy. May they be joyous and live in safety. All living beings, whether weak or strong, in high or middle, or low realms of existence. So let each cultivate an infinite goodwill 
toward the whole world. And, and so it is. Thank you so much. And so now with the brother Ted, my dearest brother, brother Ted. Ted. He prayed with us. I teach him how he do wudu and prayer. <laughs> Mashallah. Even under tragic circumstances, it's a joy to be in the house of God and the house of love. And um, we've done this too many times, as you know, for too many tragic things, whether it's a synagogue in Pennsylvania, whether it's a church in Carolina, whether it's a, a mosque or an airport or a bus stop or some other place where people in the name of God think they're doing God a service but they're totally misguided and they miss the whole purpose of religion. So if there's one message I'd like to leave you with today, it's what's on the back of my t-shirt. How many of you remember? Okay. Somebody say, one of the kids, can you read? Religion as a force for peace. Well, how could we say that when we look in history, almost all the, uh, so many of the wars that divided the world are based on religion. But they're based on a misinterpretation of religion. They're based on forgetting what the, their books and their prophets taught. And they deviate and go make up rules for themselves. And they forget the peace and the love that, that Moses brought, that Jesus brought, that Muhammad brought, that all the faiths that the Buddha brought, that the indigenous faiths teach, all teach for peace and the brotherhood of mankind. And then later we divide up and we hate each other. We even hate our own Christian brothers. We hate our own Jewish brothers that they don't think like us. The Muslims hate us, some of the Muslims, you know. This is not what Muhammad wanted. It is not what Jesus wanted. It's not what anybody teaches. It's a deviation and corruption. But I wanted to share something from uh, the writing of Baha'u'llah that addresses the religious uh, stress and uh, tensions that we're experiencing. He says, Gird up the loins of your endeavor, that happily the tumult of religious dissension and strife that agitates the people of the earth may be stilled, that every trace of it may be completely obliterated. Religious fanaticism and hatred are a world-devouring fire, which violence none can quench. The hand of divine power alone can deliver mankind from this desolating affliction. So religion is the problem, and religion is the solution. As you saw from the beautiful presentation we had, there are ways of looking at our holy books that are peaceful, and there are ways of looking at our holy books that divide and are hateful. And that's true of all of the books. So what's in our heart? And what do we see in God's word? We should see the most compassionate, the most merciful. And if anybody gives you an interpretation that's not compassionate or merciful, that's not based on love and kindness, it's missing the, the purpose of the prophet. We will only accept understandings of the word that lead us to, together, that lead us to love and lead us to elevate humanity and not that divide us. So to conclude, I'd like to share with you the, the continuation of this quote. The utterance of God is a lamp whose light is these words. You are the fruit of one tree and the leaves of one branch. Deal ye one with another with the utmost love and harmony, with friendliness and fellowship. So powerful is the light of unity that it can illuminate the whole earth. Amen, amen, amen. That's true, we are, we are all of us a fruit from one tree. And all of us as a flowers, uh, different uh, colors of the flowers in, in the same, in, in one garden. That's true, subhanAllah. So why we fight each other, I don't know, subhanAllah. So brother Junaid here, it's my pleasure to ask Junaid, he's a president of Masjid Baytul Mukarram. So peace be upon you and uh, this kind of leadership and this kind of teachers we need in our community. Our teacher, Chef Abrani. So you can see the, the leadership 
can bring people together and leadership, wrong leadership can divide and bring hatred. We ask our leaders all over the world to be like a leader of peace and a leader of just what happened in New Zealand and afterward what happened, the way the New Zealand people and the leadership showed up, that's the kind of leadership, that's the kind of people we want. And we're so glad and we're just so humble that all of you came here in the solidarity of showing that love and affection is the human quality and anything else deviates from there is not. So we appreciate you that you come here today in solidarity. There is no place of hatred. There is no place of Islamophobia. There is no place of anti-Semitic. There is no place of racism in the United States of America. United States, we stand united. And I'd also I'd like to thank especially Palm Beach County Sheriff, especially Sheriff Rapture, by the way he responded last week. And we made one call, and there's everywhere in Palm Beach County. And so we'd like to thank on, uh, through you, please convey our... And, uh, it is with profound sadness that we grieve for the death and injury of Muslims in Christ Church. While our hearts go out to our Muslim brothers and sisters in their lose pain and fear, we wish to draw attention away from the murder and violence toward the need of each of us to open our hearts to those of different culture and faiths. We pray not just for healing of the injured and comfort to those who mourn, but for a renewed outreach to others in love, kindness, and welcome. We pray for all peoples and all faiths. May we be instrumentals of peace to one another so that all may feel safe and loved. Our voices of peace must be louder than the voice of hate. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters. And now we we'll go to my dear brother and friend, and sometimes my teacher, <laughs> Rabbi Barry. Imam Zahir is my teacher. May the voices of love be more powerful than the voice of hate. What a profound comment to make. Out of many comes one. We say in Hebrew, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, which means that the power that governs this universe is one, and therefore we are one. I thank my brother, Imam Zahir, for arranging this. He is my brother, and when Jews and Muslims and Christians get along in peace, we will show the adage, the best way to conquer an enemy is to make him your friend, and we will establish peace on this world. I want to talk to the kids just for a moment. There was a wonderful woman, a little girl, who was uh, in school, like you are, learning about Islam. And some people didn't want her to go to school. And they attacked her and they said, you can't learn. You can't have education. And she said, in a world of darkness, one voice has power. Malala Yousafzai. You guessed it, right? You knew who I was talking about, didn't you? That's right. She's a role model. This Muslim girl is a role model for all of us. So this student, my student, come, come Maisha. So Maisha, she understands his story. So for this reason, I will give her one minute to share with you, to share with you a few words. Please. She understands the rabbi. Yeah, she knew. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. My name is Maisha. As our Imam, Dr. Zahir, said in his speech, the star, star, stark reality that our neighbors could do such a thing moves us to an even deeper awareness of the overwhelming need for love to be the driving force in our relationships with one another, rather than animosity or narrow-mindedness. Our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the believers in their mutual kindness, compassion, and sympathy are just like one body. When one of the limbs suffers, 
the whole body responds to it with wakefulness and fever. We can, pray can, for can you repeat what our prophet said again? Slowly. Our, our beloved prophet, peace okay. be upon him, said Love. the believers in their mutual kindness, compassion, and sympathy are just like one body. When one of the limbs suffer, the whole body responds to it with wakefulness and fever. Okay. <laughs> we pray for light, guidance, and hope at this time of great darkness. May God keep us and our neighbors safe in in this country and all the world. May God guide humanity to be kind and compassionate. Thank you so much.